All right, nerd nerd time. We're going to talk about organizing your gaming PDFs. I think I am in a pretty good spot to be able to talk about this topic. And the reason why is on last count, I have 2,700 gaming PDFs in my library. When I'm backing Kickstarters, when I'm jumping onto bundles of holding, when I'm buying products, I often get them in PDF and I bring them in. And for a long time, I just had like a great big directory where I kind of loosely sorted stuff in there. And it was really quite a mess but then i talked about it i actually did some polls with other people and how they organize their pdfs i talked a little bit about it on the show before and now i have an organization system that i like for my pdfs that works really really well for me we're going to talk about that organization system we're and we're also going to talk about how to actually find and search the pdfs that you've got in for our segment today so i have an article on sly flourish called organize rpg pdfs and other digital stuff I will link to that article so you can get a readable version. If you don't want to have to constantly come back to this video, you can look at it. And I basically describe the system and the system is very simple. You have a top level RPGs directory. Then you have your RPGs organized by system and then publisher. If you need to have a publisher and then product type, if you need to have a product type. So those last two are actually optional. So RPGs system publisher product type. Many times you don't need four layers of hierarchy. A lot of times two will do it because almost the only system that really has a lot of multiple publishers for it is 5e. There's really not a lot of other RPGs. There are some, but they're pretty rare to have other ones where a system has more than one publisher, which means most of the time you only need RPG and then system. And I'm going to show my my examples today, but I wanted to kind of talk about that a little bit first. So you have RPG system, then sometimes like for 5e, you have publisher. And then sometimes when they have a lot of products that one publisher does, you want to separate those products out. But pretty much the only time you need to have a directory is when you probably have more than 50 PDFs in one particular category. If you have less than 50 PDFs, I would say you don't need to bother subcategorizing them into their own folders because every time you create a folder, the whole thing gets more complicated. So 50 is a, a good number. If you have less than 50 PDFs, I would argue you probably don't need to have any directory at all. You could just have RPGs and all your PDFs. But the minute you get more than 50 PDFs is when you want to start separating them out. I recommend separating them out by system and then by publisher and then by product type. This system now, I've been using it about a year and it's held up very well. I've been able to find the files that I want to find. I have, tw again, 2,700 different PDFs and I've been able to find the PDFs that I want at any given time, particularly the ones that I know I'm going to use a lot. It's very easy for me to find them. So let's actually take a quick look at what my system actually looks like. So here's an example of my actual RPGs directory. This is all the top level folders that I have, and there is lots of different stuff. So I have all of the different systems that exist in here. And there are a couple, again, you, you don't want to hang on to your system too tightly. You don't want to be so precise with it that it actually becomes a hindrance rather than making it easy to, to operate with. So an example is I have a D&D Classics directory, which is PDFs of a lot of the original... Um, PDFs of a lot of original D&D material that is before 5th edition. So everything from 4E to OD&D that was published by Wizards of the Coast, I have in one big directory called my D&D Classics directory here. So I keep that separate from other from other stuff, but I don't have it like separated out by by 1st edition, 2nd edition, 3rd edition, 4th edition. I'm like D&D Classics is D&D Classics. But then of course I have like 5E and 5E is huge. And this is the only one where I have everything organized by different publishers. So if I go to Alligator Alley, I have Esper Genesis, which is a 5E variant for space-based stuff made by Rich Lescaflair. And a lot of hit point press, I have their stuff. But you can see, like, I don't necessarily have a lot of folders in here. Uh, MCDM makes a lot of 5e stuff. Arcadia was a big one. So Arcadia has its own separate directory rather than having all, having all of the uh, issues of Arcadia separately. But then all of my other MCDM stuff is, is stored in there. My Rob Schwab only has a few different 5e stuff. Rob Schwab is an interesting publisher that we're going we're gonna to talk about his stuff. So that is how all of my, like, 5e stuff is organized, is... 
RPGs 5e publisher. And then on occasion, we'll get like Cobalt Press, where Cobalt Press has a ton of different things. Uh, Cobalt Press, I think I have like 180 different PDFs from Cobalt Press. So it's getting bigger than that one. But I do have some stuff thrown into folders where it makes sense to have them into folders, mostly in like when they have map packs and things like that. Otherwise, I typically throw them in. I did make a separate Tales of the Valiant folder and I have a separate Warlock one because there's so many different like Warlock layers and stuff like that. I didn't want to crud that up. But you can see where that one probably grew a little bit bigger than 50. But, you know, it's still very manageable. I actually don't have a lot of trouble finding stuff for my Cobalt Press, my, my Cobalt Press work. But when we go back to top RPGs, again, most of the time, these RPGs don't have a whole lot. They have a handful of PDFs for any given for any given system, Cyborg, for example, or, you know, Dune. I got a bunch of Dune ones because they had a bundle of holding and I got a bunch of Dune PDFs from that. But an example of one that's really big is Shadow of the Demon Lord. So Shadow of the Demon Lord is by Rob Schwab. He's the only real publisher of it that I purchased from, but he has so many different products that I decided to go ahead and put them into separate directories because there's 141 different products that he's created for Shadow of the Demon Lord incredibly pro prolific. So that was one where I have an adventures, lands and shadows, monstrous pages and unspeakable things, poison pages and paths. Those are the categories that he has for the different products that he's made. But then of course I have like my shadow of the demon Lord PDF, demon Lord's companion. Those are all root level, you know, sort of root level adventures. So, so that works really well for me. And again, I don't get out of hand, you know, now like I have my system agnostic folder is actually very big. It's got a lot of different things in here. It's got like the A5E menagerie tokens, five room dungeons, you know, Dyson maps, a lot of stuff in here, Hamlet's hit points, books, books that are written that aren't necessarily specific to a system. So like the Cobalt Press books here and Monty Cook Games has like the weird, the weird is sort of a system agnostic setup. So that does all exist inside of my system agnostic folder. So that's like an example of one sort of junk drawer where lots of different things go. And then I have my independent publisher, independent RPGs. And this one has, you know, a fair number of single PDF RPGs where I don't feel like I need to make a whole separate category for just one particular RPG. So most of the time, if a, if a, if a whole RPG fits in a single PDF, I don't bother to uh, make a separate directory for it. I just throw out my independent RPGs folder. Now, in the same way, I do the same thing for 5e. Going back to my 5e directory, uh, I have, for example, a DMs Guild directory which has lots and lots of stuff in here this one is violating the 55 i have 194 in just in here these are all D, D beyond things that i purchased but they're all from independent publishers so i just threw them all under a great big D, D beyond category so that's a little bit of a mess then i also have an independent publications for 5e which are different than D. &D. they're not inside the dms guild did i say D, &D beyond i meant the dms guild and that is one where people are making 5e products, but they really only ever, ever make one product. And I'm just going to throw it into my independent publications. So that's, I have a couple of like cul-de-sacs, a couple of little like areas where PDFs go and swirl around that doesn't make them completely well organized. But still now with, again, 2,700 PDFs, I am able to find the thing that I want to be able to find very easily when I'm, when I'm looking through here. So then the other question is, well, okay, great. How do you find things? How, how, does that actually, how does that actually play out? And there are a couple of things that you can do. So then how do we actually find the file? So one thing to consider, I'm going to be talking about how to find them on a Mac. If you're a Windows user, I am sorry, I am not a Windows user. I can't really tell you how to find things on Windows. I know you can. I know there's a desktop search for Windows and you can probably find out information about how to do all of this on Windows. I myself operate on a Mac. So I'm going to be talking about how to find stuff and what kind of tools we can use on a Mac. And the big one is Spotlight. So the, so the Mac has Spotlight on it. And Spotlight is actually a very, very powerful feature. It has it it out of the box doesn't work particularly well but there's a couple of things that we can do to make spotlight work really well the first thing we can do to make spotlight work well is our settings so we go into our system settings and you want to type in spotlight and uh, you go to spotlight search categories right so tops go into your settings do spotlight search categories and you can turn on and off the things that you want it to search and so you can say, like, I wanted to search system settings, but you can turn off websites, series suggestions, presentations, go through and filter out the stuff you don't want it to search. Do you want it to search your contacts? You know, I don't actually want to do that. Do you want it to do conversions, definitions, documents, applications, right? Turn on, like, do you want it to search fonts? 
Probably not. Mail and messages. Probably not. Go through here and turn off the things you don't want Spotlight to search. That is a really, really great way to make Spotlight work better. Turn off the things you don't want it to search because a lot of times you just don't want it to search stuff. So that's my number one key. The number two key is a very easy way to search just your PDFs. So you bring up Spotlight with your command space bar and you can type something like Valiant and then instead of just like having it open to everything, type kind PDF. The minute you add kind PDF, it will only be searching your PDFs. And you can see immediately that you have like Tales of the Valiant Conversion Guide, T you know, TOV Monster Vault, TOV Player's Guide. So it's actually searching inside stuff. If you want to say Midgard, you say Midgard kind PDF, you immediately get Midgard Worldbook, Midgard Heroes, and so on, right? And it's just going to search the stuff. It's just going to search PDFs. Those two abilities alone. One, turning off the different things you don't want Spotlight to search. And two, adding the word kind colon PDF to just search PDFs immediately made Spotlight go from useless to useful for me to be able to search the 2,700 PDFs that I've got. So I just ran an example of like trying to find Greyhawk and it totally didn't work. So sometimes the Spotlight search isn't great. There are some other tools. We're going to talk about two other tools, more advanced tools that can help you find things. But Spotlight on its own, just using filtering Spotlight down so that you can focus just on PDFs and then learning how to do the kind.pdf can help you a lot of times. It has helped me a lot of times. So one other one other tool that we have at our disposal when you're on a Mac is you have the find or you have Spotlight, but you also have the search inside the finder. And so I can go to my RPGs directory here and I can also do a search for Kamazots. And it will show me all the stuff and I can hit RPGs and it'll just show me the files that have Kamazots mentioned in them when I go into here. But you can also see that like sometimes I've got like these HTML files and stuff like that that are in here and I don't want those. So you click this little plus sign and you can actually say kind and say PDF. That will filter it down to just PDFs. Nicophorus, right? And it shows me all of the files that are type of PDF that are inside the, the directory RPGs that have the word Nicophorus in it. Let's see if it can find Greyhawk. So when I type Greyhawk in here and I said time PDF, it actually did find them way down here at the bottom. So that can still work. And the nice thing is because it's Finder, you can, of course, say, you know, when was the last time uh, you can do date last opened? So if you want to say, hey, I want to see the stuff for Greyhawk that I've opened most recently, uh, you can sort on that f on that field too. So the Finder window itself is actually a pretty good tool. To me, the real key is, is when you click that plus sign and it lets you expand out and say, I only want to find stuff in PDF and I only want to find stuff in this directory. That sort of filtering is what makes the Finder window really useful as a way to be able to search through all your files. Again, I know this is just for a Mac. I know that there are Windows equivalents to this. I'm sorry that you'll have to hunt for whatever those are and that I can't give them to you, but I don't use, but I don't use a Windows machine. Okay, so you want to get really nerdy. There is a command line application that you can run on Linux systems and on the Mac, which is a Unix system underneath, called RipGrep All. RipGrep All is based on another tool called RipGrep, which is also based on a tool called Grep. Grep has been around for 50 years. I first heard about RipGrep All when I was perusing Hacker News, the, the popular news tech website called Hacker News. And somebody said, hey, what large language model tools should I be using in order to index my PDFs? And a lot of people said, don't use large language models. They kind of suck at it. Instead, use basic command line line tools like grep grep is just a way to search through files and find things rip grep is a way to do that only faster and rip grep all is a way to do that only faster and be able to index pdfs so being a nerd i went ahead and installed it i'm not going to get into like how you install rip grep all but you're going to have to be familiar with the command line and want to do command line stuff in order to do it but i will link to rip grep all so that you can find it over on github it's really not hard to install on a mac you can do brew install rga right you do brew install rga and, and down it comes it might have some other dependencies. So, you know, brew install Pandoc, Poplar, and FFmpeg might, you might need to install as well. Once you have it, you, it gives you some u different utilities. It gives you one called RGA, which is rip grep all, but then it gives you another one called RGA LZL. And RGA LZL is actually a way to view stuff with rip grep all. And it's pretty cool. So we're going to go to CD docs, RPGs. So now I'm in my RPGs directory. And I'm going to do RGA, oh, FZF, I'm sorry, not LZL, but FZF. And I'm going to say Camazots. I, I like to pick on Camazots because it's like a different name. Now, it's going through all of the different documents I have in, the, in that directory and finding all the instances of 
Kamazots. And not only that, the left side is showing me what file it is in, like the Southlands World Book, the Creature Codex, the Vault of Magic, and so on, Tome of Beasts, but also where it is in that book. So I can see, I can actually scroll through, let's see, I go to my Tome of Beasts, and I can scroll through and see which pages of the PDF that particular term is on. So this is a kind of a fun little researchy thing, where if it's like, if I really want to know everything about Emperor Nicophorus, the Empire of the Ghouls, I know that I can find him in Empire of the Ghouls, but I don't know what other books he's in. But I can type Nicophorus, and it will go through and show me every book where Nicophorus is described. Right, Nicophorus is the the pale end of the Tome of Beast three has under Emperor Nicophorus the dark old necromancer is known as the Necrophagi, right? Underworld Player's Guide, Tome of Beast one, Book of Ebon Tides describes him. So I can now see all of the books where Nicophorus is described and what page he's on. That is a really handy way for me able me to be able to search all of the PDFs that I have and find the examples. Now. Rip Grip All and the FZF Incorporation isn't great either because what I really want to be able to do is hit return and have it open the, the book and it doesn't. And I don't know why and I've tried to figure out why, but I want to be able to just like hit this and hit return and have it open up the PDF. I can't, but at least I can see where it is. I go, ah, it's in my 5e Cobalt Press Empire of the Ghouls directory. I can then open that up in Finder and I can find that as well. So that that is actually not a, not a terrible way to have to go do this. But I really, you know, if you're a true nerd and you like your command line utilities, RGA, FZF, Rip Grep All, which you can find on GitHub, is a pretty cool command line tool to be able to rip through all of your PDFs and find the stuff that you are that you are looking for. So between organizing your PDFs in a structure that can really flex out with the number of PDFs that you have and understanding the search tools that you have at your disposal is, in, in my mind, a really good way for you to be able to find all of the files that you need and all the material that you need in your digital format to run your role-playing games. And I hope you think so, too. So I hope that was useful. I hope you found today's show fun and insightful. I always love doing them. Thank you all for hanging out with me today. If you enjoyed this show and you want to see more stuff like this, please consider subscribing to the Sly Flourish newsletter. It's absolutely free to sign up. You get an adventure generator PDF and you get an article every week for tabletop role-playing games along with links to all of the other stuff that I do. You can also support me directly on Patreon. You saw the example of like the kind of products that patrons get and access to the Discord server and the support for me to put on shows like this. And you can pick up any of my books at the Sly Flourish bookstore, all available in the show notes. Thank you all so much. Have a great day and get out there and play an RPG.